Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Astralis Team Spirit Inferno game. This was the second map of their best of three series. And what I'm going to focus on today is some of Team Spirit's struggles on the T side of Inferno particularly. Spirit have had a shocking Inferno as of late. They are losing pretty much all of their games on it. Currently, Team Spirit sit at a 23.1% win rate on that map. That is three wins and 10 losses in the past three months. That's not good stats on this map. And I think a large portion of their struggles on this map come from their T side. What exactly I'm talking about, I'll show you a little bit here. Now, we're starting with the second round of the map. And if we go into overview here, I'm just zooming a little bit. You can see Team Spirit are clearly setting up with 30 seconds left in the round for an A hit. We haven't had much traded uh, in terms of damage, a little bit of chip damage on Chopper and Mir from contesting Banana Control. Um, one thing we can note here that Team Spirit have done very well is they've drained almost all of the utility from Astralis. They have one smoke left on one of their A site players. And they have three flashbangs left with all three of those sat on their A-side players. So the B-side players have no utility for a retake. The A-side players have very little utility to stop this hit. As you can see, this is a fairly standard A setup. We've got Chopper in the apartments with his little Mac-10 ready to come sprinting out of balcony and put pressure on the pit and mini pit players. We've got three players coming up via short to support that man who's going to be barreling out of apartments anytime soon. And then we've got Mir who is wrapping round long looking to catch any rotates and add another layer to the hit. So we're going to take a look at the hit from this sort of perspective. Now the things to note right now are the fact that the CTs have a smoke up on long. Trying to kind of isolate the fight so that they only have to look towards this sort of apartment short hit. While the T's have both arch and library smoked off themselves. Now there are two key aspects I want you to pay attention to as this hit comes in. First, I want you to pay attention to the push that kind of comes in from short. And then second, I want you to see what Mir does. Now we play out the hit. As we can see, coming into the hit, taking contact, trying to clear out angles. Magix has taken one out in pit. Bubski takes down Chopper in balcony. Right, so now we stop the hit with a one-for-one -one trade having happened. Usually this is good for the terrorists. Even trades taking you down to 4v4s, 3v3s, 2v2s, that generally favours the terrorist side. This is where the hit starts to stumble from Team Spirit. Now, the first thing for us specifically to take a look at is Mir in Arch. I'm not really sure what Mir is achieving here in Arch. I understand that Mir's point in this retake scenario is to catch the rotations coming through CT of the B-side players. The problem is that Glaive has already got all the way up middle and he's seeing absolutely no one and Glaive is about to put some very fast pressure on that short hit. And Dupree is coming through library, so Mir is going to get literally nothing done here. I'll be honest, I prefer if Mir pushes up and actually applies some pressure to Long here. Or if he's not sat in a smoke, but actually controlling this long side angle. I think sitting in the smoke in Arch here, I'm not I don't really see what Mir is doing here. I think it's it's kind of a nothing play. He's not controlling any of the map right now. He's not actually stopping anything except an arch rotation, maybe. I don't really like this play from Mir. I think Mir needs to do better here. Now, the second portion of the hit that's going to be an issue is right here. Watch everybody get stuck on the exact same angle in short. Right? Still stuck on short. Degster dies. Still stuck in a very similar angle. Magix dies. Now, let's take a look at what happens when the site actually hits. Now, as you can see, Glaive gets a very, very quick backstab up. And this allows Glaive, Magix, and Bubski to have a three-way crossfire on the three people that are stuck on short. This is kind of exposing Spirit's issue of all being grouped up on this short position. They need to get out and make more space when they're hitting the site. The problem is that nobody wants to go barreling out first, not having cleared all the angles. And it just means that they all get stuck on the exact same angle. And it's very easy for the CTs to kind of mow them all down. Now, if we quickly take a little detour over to Long here, whilst the mate... Whilst the bulk of the spirit hit is being mowed down on short, 
Mir's lurk gets exposed. Now, in some senses, you can say that's unfortunate that Mir doesn't get the kill here and that Dupree gets a very clean kill, literally doesn't even take any damage. But again, I just think Mir's put himself in an awkward position to take that fight, being sat inside the arch smoke. He could have had a more favorable angle on Dupree, potentially. And I think just could have potentially supported the, the A hit through this smoke. Just ignore Dupree, isolate Magisk down there in mini pit, and turn this into a three on one. I don't agree with Mir's decision making there. I don't agree with his lurk. I think it's one of those lurks that just ends up having zero impact. And if we just play it out at halftime here, Dexter gets isolated as the bomb going down, and Magix just has no hope there. And there we go, he goes down. Now, if we take it to this point, just so I can recap quickly the issues here. Mia not really watching the flanks at all. M Mia's kind of lurk or watching the flanks or providing an extra prong to the attack on A. He doesn't really do any of those things. This allows for a quick backstab from Glaive. And that is the first issue, is Glaive getting such a quick and uncontested backstab to create a three-ray cross crossfire on these short players. Now, the second big issue, apart from Mia's ineffectual lurk, is all of the spirit players getting stuck on short here. The fact that Sumdai Young doesn't try and swing round to get a different angle on Bubski, Degster doesn't try and push and take control of Mini Pit and Pit, they all just sit on the same angle and they just get crossfired and mowed down. We're not going to slate Mir again here for losing the battle with Japri. That happens, you don't always win all of your fights, but I guess you can potentially critique him for once this fight starts happening here and all his teammates are getting crossfired down, I think Mir needs to start walking towards Long to offer an alternative prong to the attack. And like I say, he could even potentially walk through the smoke here and turn this into a three-on-one. Now, the next clip that I want to show you is taken from the same game. It's a few rounds later. We're in round eight now. And Astralis have racked up a six-to-one lead over Team Spirit. Now... What we're seeing here is a half buy from Spirit, but we actually see a half buy where they give themselves every chance to win the round. Now, what we get from Team Spirit here is a late banana take and one that I like. It pushes Lucky all the way back off the angle. Forces him all the way back into the site. Magix decides to join him in the site and we'll stop it right here. Now, here is where I think we see the first issue with the hit, but this is a relatively minor one. Magix comes flying through this smoke. And the spacing's not great. There's nobody close behind him. Two or three of these T's needed to be relatively close to his tail. If they had been close to his tail, with the smoke down here, Mage is tucked away in this corner, I think there's definitely a chance for Spirit to get an entry and get onto the site. Magix is definitely at risk of getting dinked by one of these pistols and taken down immediately. Lucky in new box is going to have to hit his shots. From this angle, if he's going to want to take Spirit out cleanly, he's going to need to hit every shot. It's not necessarily likely that will happen. I think if Team Spirit space a little bit better on this hit, then they have a good chance of getting onto the site. But let's see instead what happens, and we'll go to this angle as it gives us a good view. Now, Team Spirit here have every chance of getting into the site. They have a smoke down in CT. They have a smoke down at Coffins. They have a good chance of getting onto the site and t making this a 4v2 versus Magisk and Lucky. The problem is, is that they just take too long. As you can see here, just sitting around in the smoke, taking too long, not pushing onto the site, getting stuck on the same angle, every single one of them, and they get mowed down. It's a very similar story to what we saw on the A site in our first clip. They don't create enough space, which they desperately need to, to get onto the site. As you can see, instead of anybody running to barbecue or anybody trying to run towards coffins or anybody splitting this hit up at all so that the CTs have more than one place to look, they all just take the same fights on the same angles. And they just get mowed down. Admittedly, it's on a half by, and admittedly, it's not the end of the world to lose on a hit like this. But once again, I think we see a potential hit that could have been successful for Spirit. They could have got onto the site, got entries and got the bomb down. It kind of comes crashing to a halt because some of their T-side play is not so great. You guessed it, we're back at the A-site again to watch another failed take of the bomb site from Spirit, and we're going to see similar themes start to pop up again. Now, the first kill on this hit is kind of unlucky. Lucky is the person who gets it. You can't really blame Chopper for that. He gets swung by the Deagle, he loses the fight to a headshot. Uh, 
it happens. But if we watch as the hit continues, Team Spirit do the same thing. They get stuck on short. They slow the hit down, being stuck on short, giving CT time to rotate and time to all get on the same angle. And they just get mowed down. Magix gets traded here. This is good. But the hit just stalls. And it's due to a molly, obviously. I totally understand that. But rather than going back or rather than someone now trying to push to create some... This is what I don't understand. Why aren't Spirit moving to try and create some sort of space when they know that they've got Dupree mollied off? They've heard him get ticked by the molly. Somebody's got to take a risk here and swing and expose themselves to certain angles that maybe they haven't cleared to give themselves a chance in the round. I think the problem here is that they don't put any pressure on the CTs. The CTs can all sit in their angles and get their rotates off and there's no overall kind of pressure on the CTs. As we can see, Glaive has already rotated to library here, so he's close. Mir gets taken down by Lucky, and they know exactly where Degster and Sundai Young are, and they can essentially take the fights at their leisure. And we see Degster run away, or run partially away. He tries to make the clutch work, but he doesn't succeed, and Team Spirit lose another round. The whole time, Magisk was actually sat anchoring that B site. So Team Spirit don't didn't realize it, but they actually had a 3v3 here. And again, I think it's just another example of Team Spirit. They don't create space very well on these hits at all. They tend to get stuck in choke points, and they stall out. It's not as if they're saying, right, boys, let's slow down the round. We've got a plan. They just stall out because they don't seem to know what to do once their initial hit doesn't just mow the site down with no resistance. I think another thing to notice here is another kind of ineffectual lurk, as it were, by Murr. I'm not trying to slate him and say that he's a terrible player or anything like that, but I think it's just another thing to note that once again, look, Murr leaves the main prong of the hit, doesn't try and go long, but instead tries to come up through and sort of catch this apartment sky off guards. I think it's another example of where Murr kind of gets his timings and gets his, his lurk a little bit wrong. Lurking is like that, but I think it's twice now in the same game where we saw Murr get a lurk wrong and it cost his sight a lot of potency on their execute. And for our final example of the video, we'll come back to the B site and we got another hit that just stalls out from Spirit and they get mowed down. Now, Chopper gets caught from the off angle from Magisk. That happens. It's fine. This round is going to be an uphill battle now because they're five versus three. But again, Team Spirit just show a general aversion to sort of taking enough risks or creating enough spaces. Still sat on the exact same angle, they get mollied off. Now, they smoke out the molly and they start to push. Still on the same angles, still on the same angles, pre-firing Dupree, still on the same angles, still on the same angles, still on the same angles. So from this moment when they're lining up the hit at around 50 seconds and Chopper dies, to this moment, just before the last person dies at about 33 seconds, that's 20 seconds where they're just stood on the same angle the entire time. Nobody moves to create any space. Nobody tries to, to make a play to be that battering ram that forces the space in the site and creates chaos and opportunities for other players to, to thrive. And I think this is a problem that I see in Team Spirit's T side in general is apart from Magix is the only person who seems willing to do it. And often he's not supported well in doing it. The spacing is poor behind him. Team Spirit don't seem to have enough in the team in terms of risk taking on their T side. Nobody's willing to just barrel out and get their head blown off in order to create space. They all seem to kind of be taking the same jaw like, oh, I'll win this fight. Oh no, I'll win this fight. And it just doesn't come off. Somebody needs to be willing to sacrifice themselves on the T side, sacrifice their score, sacrifice their stat line in order to just run out and create some space to get a CT head turning in a different direction. And I think Team Spirit don't do this enough on their T side. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, you know the drill. Uh, and if you didn't, screw you.